So it's actually a tremendous privilege to be able to talk about Gaussian quadrature because some amazing individual discovered it and I get to talk about it. And I get the adulation. Gauss doesn't get the adulation, but I will get your excitement over just how beautiful this idea is, just how perfectly everything fits. So here's what we have. We have a polynomial, P of x. And let's agree that we, have, we still have a segment from minus 1 to 1. And we're still allowed to place n points on this, on this segment from minus 1 to 1. The question is, which, where? Well, I'll tell you where. This polynomial is of degree up to 2n minus 1. So I will divide it by the nth Legendre polynomial. And you'll see why in a moment. So down there somewhere, there is the nth Legendre polynomial. It's of degree n. It's of degree n. Do you, have, do you remember polynomial division? If you divide an 11th degree polynomial by a 4th degree polynomial, what degree polynomial do you get? 7th, exactly right. And you'll have a remainder that's no more than cubic, right? Because you're dividing by 4th degree polynomial, so the remainder will be a 3rd degree polynomial or less. Well, I'm dividing by nth degree polynomial. And my polynomial is of degree 2n minus 1. So the result will be a polynomial of degree n minus 1, right? Dividing 2n minus 1 by nth degree. It subtracts that degree. So I will have q of x, that's the, no, yeah, q of x quotient. q of x times L sub n of x. That's my division. And this one will be of degree no greater than n, n minus 1 or less, plus the quotient, which will be of degree n minus 1, right? I'm dividing by nth degree, also n minus 1 or less. Funny how they both have the same maximal degree. Okay, we're almost there. We don't even need half an hour. Do you agree that this one is orthogonal to this one? Yes, because it's degree less than n. It's up to n minus 1, and as I mentioned, and it was very important, this one is orthogonal to any polynomial of degree n minus 1. Okay, so I can always do that with any polynomial. Now let me integrate both sides, and we will first discover what the true integral is because we want to find points and weights such that the approximate integral equals the true integral for degree up to 2n minus 1. So let's evaluate the integral. So here's where orthogonality comes in. This integral is 0. That's the moment where you can no longer wonder why in the world introduce something like this? And it's only zero because orthogonality here is considered with respect to this inner product. And the whole business of orthogonalization was happening with respect to this inner product. And now we're considering a problem that has nothing to do with inner products. It has to do with integration, numerical integration. And we have an expression that's precisely the inner product. And for that reason, because this one is orthogonal to all of the ones of lower power. With respect to this very inner product, we know that this is zero. And so the integral of p of x equals the integral of the remainder. Ha! Let's write that down before I explain the ha. OK. So all that's left is to integrate the remainder. Now, I will choose my points here and my weights so that I get this part exactly and so the result needs to be zero and I will get this part exactly. And so this polynomial, excuse me, this integral 
evaluated, quote unquote, approximately, according to the Gaussian quadrature scheme, will match this exactly and will match this exactly. So to get this part right, I will choose my n points to be the n zeros of the nth Legendre polynomial. These are my doubt, these are my x's. Let me draw them like this because that's roughly the pattern that they follow. They become much denser at the corners. Remember the, the last fact that I mentioned about Legendre polynomials, an nth degree Legendre polynomial has exactly n real roots and they're all between minus one and one. Apparently Gauss knew that. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> so those will be my points. And given those points, I will choose the weights that I just described in step one. I will choose the weights such that all nth degree polynomials are evaluated exactly, right? Because I still have the degree of freedoms, degrees of freedoms of the weights. And those weights I will adjust, given these points, I will solve the Vandermont matrix, that linear system equation, I will adjust them so that all of the polynomials of degree up to n will be evaluated exactly. And those are my w's, w1 through wn. And these are my x1 through x, well, they're n of them, no, that's right through xn. And now look what notice. If that is now my scheme, w1, f of this very special, should we call them g1s maybe for Gaussian, right? From g1 to gn, Gaussian points. If this is my scheme and I apply it to this function, and of course, I'm applying it to this function, but I know the analysis. I know that this function equals this product. This part will drop out because I'm evaluating it at those points where this function vanishes. I'm evaluating it at the Legendre zeros. So that will vanish. So this part will evaluate to zero, which is actually the true value of this integral, which is also zero. I envy Gauss and his, and his everything. <laughs> and this will be evaluated exactly because I chose my weights intelligently to match, to be those exact weights that integrate polynomials of degree up to n exactly. And that means that according to this scheme, any polynomial of degree 2n minus 1 is evaluated exactly. And that's the triumph of Gaussian quadrature. So in that example that you saw in the video of Gaussian quadrature, I was using 10 points, which was equivalent to integrating polynomials of degree up to 19 exactly. Now, if you think about that hapless poor cosine function that looks like this, you can super smooth, right? I was I made it sound like a random function, but I actually was careful to choose something super smooth. How easy, how perfectly, or I should say, how well do 19th degree polynomials approximate the cosine? Pretty darn well. And you can get every single feature. So quadratic would get quite a bit of it, and then x to the fourth will get it, you know. But when you're talking about it in terms of Legendre polynomials, even more vivid, just how powerful you would be, how powerful the method would be at approximating this function. If I, have, if I had chosen this function, which has more than 19 roots, right, then 19th degree polynomials would not approximate it accurately at all, and then Gaussian quadrature will fail. So in showing off the magic of Gaussian quadrature, I was careful to choose a function that can be approximated very well by a 19th degree polynomial. And that's why it worked so well. And most functions are like that. You have to think really hard for a function that's not like that. That's why Gaussian quadrature is used all over the place. And just as, a, as an important note, I will mention that when you do, when you pick Gaussian weights, 
and you use the same van der Mond approach to determine the weights, instead of oscillating like crazy, and I don't exactly know the reason why that is, they actually become super nice. They all become roughly 2 over n. They're almost, they're not the same numbers. There's a small distribution, but it's a very smooth distribution. So that relaxes that problem with oscillating weights. They're all very nice and positive, typically. And so that solves all the problems. And that's why Gaussian quadrature is used everywhere. It's really an amazing, amazing thing that if you can use it, it's basically better than any alternative because you get so much for so little. You, you, you squeeze every drop of power out of every degree of freedom that you have. So that wraps up our discussion of Gaussian quadrature, and you will notice that it was very, very short and sweet. I would have never thought of this. Remember what I said about Graham Schmidt? Not Graham Schmidt, yeah, Graham Schmidt. And I said I would have thought of that. I would have never thought of this. This has the imprint of, a, of an incredibly insightful person with not only the depth of the insight, but the breadth and just knowing everything. I mean, that's what being in the presence of a great mathematician feels like. And it's nice that Gauss allows us to experience it, just how everything comes together into a gem. But from my point of view as a teacher, the most exciting thing about it is that it's pure linear algebra. In this case, linear algebra 2. But there is not, there's no calculus here. The only thing that matters is that integration is a linear operator. And now, if before I was not apologetic, but I, I was asking you to please be patient and wait for, to see the benefit of inner products, that concept, that view of the world, well, now there is absolutely no argument that it's one of the most important and wonderful concepts in linear algebra and certainly if for no other reason, and there are many other reasons, deserves the title of the third pillar of linear algebra. All right, that's it.